Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. My bulletin board is really filling up with Christmas adventure ornaments, but I'm not done yet. Here is the eighth design in this collection. She's the felt and fabric Christmas adventure angel. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. I don't know if you're keeping track, but here is the stack of fabrics that is remaining from my original 21 fat quarters. Um, it's interesting that three of these are the same print, and I actually love uh, of this print. I like a scatter print because if since it's non-directional, I I can do like a skirt and it won't be upside down on half. So I really like this kind of a print and I've decided to use this one along with some felt to create my next project. I cut an eight inch square from uh, like a wonder under or a heat and bond or something and I ironed it onto the back of the fabric. And now I'm going to cut out a scallop circle with my die cutter. And this is going to be the skirt of my angel. I will also cut out an 8 inch circle of this red felt. Here's the fabric I've uh, I fused that, um, that wonder under onto the back. I will fuse it onto the top of this red circle of felt. And as long as I had my die cutter out, I also cut out this smaller scallop circle which I will use to make the wing. There we go, I'm just sort of centering it by eye. Does that look about right? I'm gonna fuse this and I'll be right back. Here's my circle and I also pressed, this is about three and three quarters of an inch across and I just pressed that in half. I'm gonna do a little machine embroidery around the edge. I think I'll use like a blanket stitch with white thread around the edge of these scallops and then I'll do a little bit heavier stitch also in white along the edge of this folded scallop circle. Also, I want to just encourage you, maybe you don't have the exact same dies that I have. This one is the one I have, Spellbinders Grand Nestabilities. But this one would also work. This is just a little bit slightly different shape and you can just get regular circles or the butterfly also works well as wings. So don't uh, be discouraged if you can't find exactly the exact um, model that I have. Can you see the little stitching around the edge of the scallop? You can see it on the back for sure. And then here's my little wing piece. I did kind of a, um, I think it's like a triple straight stitch. I really like it, it's distinct and it looks the same on the front and the back. Now this is a lot of work for a skirt, but guess what? We can get three skirts out of this. So I'm going to determine the center by folding it into quarters. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yay, okay, it's about right there. And so I'm going to cut into the center straight. It doesn't have to be perfect though, thank goodness. And then I'm going to count over four scallops because there are 12 scallops total. And I'll be able to cut out three little wedges. And this will be for three little angels. I'll fold this in half, and again, this doesn't have to be perfect. I will thread my machine with red thread, and I'm gonna seam up the straight side. I'm just gonna make one. I've sewn this up, and I trimmed a little bit off the bottom of the seam allowance, and I'm gonna turn this right side out. That looks good. I'm actually gonna cut off the tip, so it's okay if this pokes through. I do want to get the full height. Okay, that looks good. 
then we're just going to snip off the very top. That looks good. And now we just have to put everything together. I have a 20 millimeter face and I've already made the face. You can find the instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face in my Focus on Faces video. I've got my six inch tool. So I'm going to pull off two lengths of tool. Just about 12 to 15 inches each one. And then I have my 16th inch ribbon, the ivory ribbon, one sixteenth inch. I'm trying to present a cohesive collection and so there are going to be some elements the same. For instance, I'm going to use the same um, hair yarn that I've been using for these projects in this collection because I really like it and I don't know, it just I'm kind of committed to it now. In the next collection, maybe I'll use something different. So there I've tied up, tied off those lengths of tool and then I'm going to thread this through here. I might have put that on a needle just to make sure that it can reach. There we go. Poke it through all the way and then we'll kind of pull that back until that tip of the tool is right there. And then we'll thread this through the head bead from the bottom to the top. Just like that. Make sure the face is in the front. There's the back. And then I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of hot glue right here. There's a little drop of glue there in the back. And so I'm going to spin her head around and I'm going to try to line up the features with this little dip here. That looks good. Now I'll trim off her little petticoat. I like when it shows a little bit. And now, oh, did I get glue on there? Okay, we're good. I'm gonna tie this off at the top. You know, sometimes I'll tie a knot right here, but it really doesn't do any good, and so I'm trying to get out of that habit. There we go. Now for the collar, I have about 15 or 18 inches of flat white lace. I have a doubled strand of this heavy duty craft thread, and I'm gonna gather up the top straight edge of this lace to go around her neck. I secure my thread like that in the folded over end just to make sure there's enough there to hold it and then I'll just do a running stitch all the way down the length. I'm placing the stitch just below the header. My lace is gathered up and I'll place this around her neck with the ends in the back and I'll join those ends together. Just stitching through. Oh, that's cute. And then just to make sure that it stays up high, I'm going to stitch from the back to the front. You know, I use a thimble. Some of these things are hard without a thimble. Um, and also this is important why I only use a little smudge of glue at the, um, the top there where I secured her head because if you get a big chunk of hot glue there, it's hard to stitch through. Now I'm going to secure the ends in the back and it's not really important to be neat because this will be glued on the back and so I'm not too concerned about it. That looks good. Now for her hair, I'll use this yarn. It's um, it's a fine sort of a loopy mohair, my favorite. And I'm going to do this figure eight method. Hold the end with these fingers and wrap it maybe six times. Let's do six times. One and two and three and four and five and six. 
and then take the top piece, wrap all the way around, take the original end and tie it off. I'm going to do it a second time. And I also have a video, um, <laughs> something like Ruby's hair technique, and I'll link to it. So there's one little bundle, a little figure eight bundle, and I'll do a second one. Leave yourself enough of a tail to tie off. In this, I am not stingy with yarn. I always have long tails. It's frustrating if you don't have enough to tie. Two, three, four, five, six. I think five would have been fine and seven would have been fine. Then I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna leave about a quarter of an inch right here. I don't want to cut it too short because I don't want that knot to come undone. So I have two bundles with um, six loops. They're both about the same. And I'm gonna start in the back. I'll apply some glue to the back of her head. I covered the whole back of her head. I'll place the knot of this bundle right behind the hanging loop. And I'm just gonna press that into the glue to cover the back of her head. I really want every piece to be in contact with the head. So add a little more glue here and press that in. I want this to cover the back half of her head. There we go. And now this will go in the front and I'm a little bit more careful with this one. I'll add some glue right here and press that knot in. Then I just want to see how it's going to look. I'll give it a twist and I'm going to press it in like that and like that on either side. So I'll add a little line of glue right here, right here, like that, and then twist and press. That looks good. And then the same thing for this side. That looks good. I can see her face. Now for her halo. I have this uh, 20 gauge gold wire. I'm gonna cut off just a couple of inches. It doesn't take much. I shaped it into a U around my thimble and I'll add a drop of glue here and here. There we go, and then I'm pressing that into the sides of her head, into her hair, like that. So it doesn't go all the way around, it just presses into the sides. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm gonna decorate this little area under her chin. I'm gonna do baker's twine. You know, this is one of the components that I have consistently tried to include in all of the ornaments from this collection. I'll tie that into a little bow. I don't want it to be halfway. I like it to be maybe a third. And then I'll trim these even with the hem, but then I'm going to tie each end into an overhand knot. There we go. And I'm gonna add a little holly sticker and I'll apply some hot glue to it. And when I press that onto the bow, it's gonna help to secure that knot. So hopefully it won't come untied, just like that. The holly looks really good against the white. And we're almost done. Here's the wing piece. I'm gonna add a little circle of glue right here at the top, right up at the fold. You don't need it in the center, just up here. And then I'll press that onto the back of her head and voila. 
She's so cute. The Christmas Adventure Felt and Fabric Angel is done. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.